The point of our transportation unit is to really think about the amount of energy that our vehicles use. But when it comes down to it, we, the most important thing is to bring this back to our everyday lives. So let's think about buying a car, something that you might do at some point in your life. And if you were to buy a car, what criteria would you use to choose which one to get? You might have come up with things like the price, the cool design, size, reliability, safety, or even the color of the car. Those are all totally reasonable things to think about. But I want to sort of step back and draw your attention to the fact that this idea of setting up the criteria that we'll use when is the first step in comparing different engineering solutions in this science and engineering practice in NGSS called defining a problem. And really choosing the perfect car is actually the, a, a process of comparing different engineering solutions. There are different cars that accomplish different things for us. Uh, and you need to find the one that fits your criteria best. So let's say that we're shopping not for you, but for a budget conscious family. I mean, this car needs to be big enough for a family of five, have lots of trunk space, and of course, it needs to be cheap. And for whatever reason, this particular family has settled upon these two options, uh, Toyota Prius and the Kia Soul. Based on the information on the slide and the criteria that we set up on the previous slides, which car do you think they should choose? Both of these cars will fit our family of five, but you'll see that the Prius is just a little bit longer, which means that it has a little bit more trunk space and a little bit more legroom. So space was such an important thing to this family, and the Prius meets that criteria better. But it looks like it's a little bit more expensive, or actually quite a bit more expensive here. Until you start looking a little closer, the Prius uses way less gas, or to put it another way, it has much less energy lost to friction. Since energy doesn't come for free, I wonder which one of these cars actually saves us money in the long run. We need to not only consider the initial purchase price, but also the cost of gas over the car's lifetime, and maybe some maintenance costs, although we're going to ignore those. But the cost of gas is really different because the Soul uses twice as much gas as the Prius. How much is that going to end up costing you? Well, you're going to need to consider a couple of questions. How many miles does a car drive over its lifetime? And what's the price of gas? I'm going to leave you with the information on the previous slides, and you can do some research, do some math, and then come back here and tell me which one of these cars saves money in the long run. Let me go over my answers real fast. I looked up how many miles a car usually travels in its lifetime. Now, they usually go for about 15,000 miles a year, and the average age of a car on the road today is about 11 years. So that brings us in the 100. 50,000 mile range, and I saw estimates ranging from 100,000 to 200,000 miles. Once we know that, we just need to figure out how many gallons of gas it's going to take each car to drive 100,000 or 200,000 miles. So let's take the example of the Soul. It does uh, travels 150,000 miles in its lifetime, and each gallon of gas gets you 27 of those miles. So you just divide those two, and you get a little over 5,000 gallons. I did that for the Soul and the Prius, not only for 150,000 miles, but also for the whole range from 100 to 200,000, just so we could see what the difference is. That's one of the things that you do in science. You like to see the range of uncertainty based upon your assumptions. Now, to figure out, to figure out the difference, we just subtract the two, and we get 5,556 minus 2679, and we find that the Prius uses about 3,000 gallons less than the Soul over its lifetime. That's a lot of fuel. So how much does 3,000 gallons worth cost? Well, you just multiply that out by the average cost of gasoline. And you might choose a number like $3, $3.50. I happened to go to the almanac of LA gas prices and looked up how gas prices have changed over the last 11 years, the lifetime of an average car on the road right now. And I saw that the prices range from $2.80 is the cheapest year, uh, all the way up to $4.08 for the most expensive year. And the average over that time period was $3.50. And I think that's the most intelligent number to use. Uh, but any number that you chose around in here might make it. But you might have found a number anywhere in here based upon, again, your assumptions. When we start comparing those numbers, an average of 10000 to the initial purchase cost of the Prius, we start seeing that actually, the Prius ends up saving you money in the long run. And that's because you spend more on gas during the lifetime of the Soul than you did to purchase it. But that's not the whole story. It turns out that each gallon of gas causes pollution that people estimate costs us an extra $0.74 cents of extra health care costs in our community. So how much extra does that add to the cost of the Soul? When we use our middle of the road number, we find that the Prius ends up saving more than $2,000 in healthcare costs that our community has to bear when we burn that gasoline. But that's not the whole story either. 
Each gallon of gas emits 20 pounds of carbon dioxide, and that's going to lead to extra costs from the damage from climate change, from extreme weather events like extra hurricanes, extra droughts, floods, all those things that we're worried about. And we don't even know what those costs will actually be, but those get added on every time you drive a gas-powered car. When you add all these things up together, the initial purchase cost was more expensive for the Prius, but the cost of gas over the car's lifetime, the healthcare savings from less pollution, and the savings from avoiding climate change is at least $5,000 in savings for that family. With our understanding of energy right now, engineers have the technology to make cars twice as efficient as they are today. That would save consumers money on gas, reduce illness and healthcare costs from pollution, and avoid the horrific impacts of climate change. So why don't we? Well, actually, the government mandated that all cars be as efficient as the Prius by 2025. And if you look at this graph, it's kind of interesting. It goes pretty flat for a long, long time, and then there was suddenly a change here. What do you think happened right there? This big increase in fuel efficiency happened shortly after the 2008 presidential election when we got a new president. Now, you might remember back from your three branches of government that the executive branch is charged with interpreting the laws. Well, there was a law that created the Environmental Protection Agency that had been interpreted kind of loosely for quite a while. And the new president came along and said that we need to actually use that law to protect the people from air pollution. And the way to do that is to have cars that are more efficient. These standards are really ambitious, but it turns out that in 2017, they were abandoned. Why do you think that happened? You might remember that 2017 is shortly after the 2016 presidential election, where we also got a new leader, a new person that reinterpreted the laws and decided that it wasn't as important to protect the environment in the same way. And this little change, where we have now new standards that are much less ambitious, will cost our community billions of dollars and tens of thousands of premature deaths over the next decade. So we can return to this question of why don't we have these standards? And I'd like you to discuss with your fellow students, engage in a, in a discussion using the, the, the tools that are available to you, thinking about what's going on and what you can do about changing it. This story illustrates one of the many ways that our government affects your everyday life behind the scenes, ways that you may not even realize are happening. It also shows how much power our elected leaders have to create and interpret laws that reflect their values. So that means that you need to help elect people that reflect your values, and you have a role in that. CSUN is really trying to encourage people to get out and act now, to register to vote, and then show up in the next election that's happening, and make sure that your voice is heard. It really does make a difference.